Who's your favourite boxer? Epo. Put the clip in. Ernie Shavers is a veritable legend in the world of boxing, thanks almost entirely due to the force he can exert while punching things. In his prime, Shavers' punch prowess was so well known that even the late great Muhammad Ali didn't want none, something Shavers is rightfully all kinds of proud of. So why are we talking about Shavers today? Well, to put it simply, it is the opinion of many experts and boxers who face Shavers in the ring that he possessed the singular hardest punch of any boxer in history. Like, you know, that's like quite a feat considering that like some of the other boxers he's standing on. Like, I'm not saying like in his weight class, I'm not saying like of his era, I am saying in all of boxing, this guy had the hardest fucking punch. Like Muhammad Ali himself, which like sorry, we'll get to in a moment, like confirmed his life, like no one ever hit me as hard as Ernie Shavers did. Like every boxer who faced him was like, it's like, yeah. He's not like his speed's like, you know, leaves a lot to be desired. He's, like, his technique maybe not all there, but that fucking punch though. Do not step to that punch. And honestly, the question is like, well, how did this man develop such like phenomenal punching power? And it's because he worked out super hard doing the Rocky method. By the Rocky method, I'm assuming you mean like old school. Yeah, not like going to the gym and lifting weights. I'm talking like just natural movement, like over time to develop the muscles in like a natural organic way. And two of the exercises that Shavers like favored the most was throwing around large bales of hay and chopping wood. And using that as a jumping off point, what is your favorite weird exercise featured specifically in the Rocky movies? Because each of those movies usually has like, they always have the famous montage scene. There's usually an exercise in there that like, he does that's like considered weird by everyone else, but helps him like, you know, develop that edge that he needs for the fight. The classic is punching meat. Punching meat, yeah, to obviously get used to hitting like, you know, something that feels like akin to human flesh. Because fun fact people don't know, pig, um, corpses are used in ballistic tests and things of that manner because like the makeup of a pig's flesh and the density of his bones is almost exactly what a human's is. So punching an upside down piece of meat or a big like, side of beef or some shit is like punching a human body. I think my favourite's in Balboa, where Rocky comes out of retirement to fight the heavyweight champion after a computer simulation says in his prime he'd have beaten him. So, you know, to prove his worth, like, you know, test his mettle once again. And it involves just slamming a hubcap into a concrete floor as hard as humanly possible, over and over and over again. Obviously, just get used to, like, obviously, the, the vibrations, like, going up his arm. It's like, I saw him, like, holy fuck, a man who can do that is a man I do not want to fight. So I get that chopping wood will obviously make you stronger. Yeah, it's a good exercise, obviously. It's basically an entire upper body workout. I can't see how though why chopping wood would make you that much stronger compared to like the actual exercise the boxers are meant to do. See, normally I'd agree with you, but in this case it would mean arguing with Shavers himself. And given how hard he can punch, that's not a man I want to cross. Um, because in his own autobiography, he says that chopping wood, I personally believe, increased my punching power by 25% which is a wildly unscientific claim that I am not even going to try and argue with given that 90% of the fights that Ernie Shavers won during his boxing career ended with him knocking his opponent the fuck out. So we get an idea of how strong these punches were. Okay. In his prime, like, what could he do with these punches? Well, at his physical peak, Ernie Shavers was capable of basically knocking out any opponent he faced with a single liver obliterating, like, hook to the body. And um, that was impossible to block. How is a punch impossible to block? Because Shavers' punches were so strong that even if you did block them, they still did damage. Like, they went through your guard, basically. Like, they did scratch damage, as it were. <laughs> because, like, as I alluded to earlier, like, Ernie Shavers... He wasn't he didn't have the best footwork, he wasn't the fastest, but his fucking punches, man. He put all his stats into strength, and that carried him basically throughout his entire boxing career. And it's noted that even if you could block his punches, they would still hurt. 
And it was one of his techniques, like, just basically punch through people's guard. Because he knew that if you just repeatedly punch them in the arms, even though he wouldn't win on points because they're blocking the shot, eventually their arms are going to get so bruised and bloodied that like, they're going to stop trying to gas their arms hurt that much, at which point the face and body is open. And there are reports from people saying, like, who faced him in the rings going, I block, like, even when I was blocking his punch, it was like a full force Ernie Shaver's punch being blocked felt like being hit by another boxer unguarded. People would like finish matches against him with their arms bloodied and bruised from the amount of punches they tried to stop from him. It sounds like a silly question, but I'm assuming that his punches had like full knockout power. Absolutely, yes. And it's noted that Ernie Shavers possessed like sufficient power in his punches, even in later rounds, to knock someone the fuck out with one punch. <laughs> On that note, because I could feel the conversation steering this way even before it began, Let's talk about the best punches in fiction and immediately just start with Saitama in One Punch Man. Let's give One Punch Man, Saitama, his due and both to say our favourite punch from the first series. So the second one's out now but I've not watched it. I'm going to blow my load immediately and just go straight to the last episode and just say the serious punch against Lord Boris that splits the atmosphere of the planet with its power. Because holy fuck, I just watched it and went, yeah. I am so happy that this scene exists. This show is fucking amazing. And I know that's like difficult to talk to about the most powerful punch ever thrown, but have you got one that's a personal favourite? Well, I think the first time he names one is consecutive normal punches. <laughs> okay, is it um, the King Lion guy? Yeah, yeah. Consecutive normal punches. So with that out of the way, let's discuss other awesome punches from fiction. And I'm going to like, open up the conversation with, like, you know, the rocket-powered punch in Pacific Rim 1. Because, <laughs> oh, I remember when I was watching that, and it's like, oh, man, these put like, because the weight, that's the weight of the punches that always gets me. Because like, it goes so slowly, and the, you feel the impact of every hit. Oh, what's yours? Let's Go let's take a completely different angle. Okay. I'm gonna say, like, not one specific punch, but any punches thrown in classic uh, superhero cartoons or TV shows where they always put pow oh, the thwack <laughs> and thwacks. Keeping it within the realm of comics, I'm gonna hit back with um, Flash's infinite mass punch. Ooh. If he runs at the speed of light or close to it, he can deliver a punch with the force of an exploding supernova. And I want to like single out specifically the episode of Justice League Unlimited where Lex Luthor combined with Brainiac takes over the world and the only hero left is the Flash. And he taunts the Flash and, the, and he goes, what are you going to do? And like he basically starts running away. And Luthor Brainiac starts laughing at him, but he don't run away. He's getting a fucking run up for a punch. And he runs all the way around the world and comes back and punch donkey punches Luther the Brainiac in the back of the head. And then a split second later, he's back again and again. And he does that for like five solid minutes. And just like he's just increasingly powerful punches. And he punches him so hard that he becomes speed incarnate and disappears into a different dimension because he ran so fast. So to bring this back to Shavers, yes. you said that other boxers were scared to go up against him. Yes, up to and including Muhammad fucking Ali, who um, obviously faced Shavers in the ring once. It's one of Shavers', Shavers most famous bouts. And while Ali did win in the end, after the fight, in the interview, he told an interviewer there, like, Shavers hit me so hard, my kinfolk back in Africa felt it. So basically, like, he punched me so hard, like, my ancestors felt like him rattling my bones. And that's a quote that, quite understandably, Shavers likes quite a lot. So whenever he's asked to sign photos of that fight, he signs it with that quote. <laughs> and that is just amazing, isn't it? Like, a guy widely considered the greatest boxer of all time is saying, like, I beat him, but fucking hell, it was hard. Like, the way he was punching me, I almost didn't want to win. I wanted to kill him. It's so ridiculous. My kinfolk back in Africa felt it. So 
that's the most famous fight he's had. Yes. But who got their shit rocks the hardest? What, by Ernie Shavers and one of his, like, you know, world-destroying megaton punches? Yeah. That would be Sylvester Stallone. What? Yes. To bring it back to Rocky, as all things should do, um, when Sylvester Stallone was, like, scouting talent for Rocky Three, he originally pegged Ernie Shavers to play Clubber Lang, like the role played by Mr. T. And... Um, during training, like, you know, see if they had chemistry in the ring and, like, you know, see if, like, Shavers was in shape enough to convincingly play, like, you know, a, a, right, a boxer who could stand up to Rocky. They were sparring and Sylvester Stallone would probably got very annoyed that Shavers wouldn't punch him for real. It was, like, doing light jabs and, like, a few, like, you know, pretend punches. And Sylvester Stallone told him, look, if you're going to film together, you need to take me seriously. Like, I've, tra I've trained a lot for these roles. Um, hit me as hard as you can. Shavers went, I don't want to do that. Are you sure? And so I said, yes, I'm sure, hit me for real, I can take it. And what Ernie Shavers did is he then went, okay, and immediately punched Sylvester Stallone as hard as he could in the liver. And do you know what Sylvester Stallone did? What? Doubled over in pain and vomited all over the ring. Jesus. Yeah, he then decided that he didn't want to cast Ernie Shavers as Clubber Lang and went and got Mr. T instead. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Exactly. The thing is, well, we've talked about it before. This happened in Sylvester Stallone's next movie when Rocky IV, the same thing happened with um, Dolph Lundgren. And um, Sylvester Stallone got punched by Dolph Lundgren in the chest and his heart nearly exploded. You think he'd alert after facing off with Ernie Shavers? Now, the guy's insane. It really ruins the mythology of Rocky to yeah. know that every time he came up against like an actual boxer or he got, someone, yeah. he just went over immediately. In one punch. Yeah. yeah. When the whole like character of Rocky is that he's basically got a cast iron jaw. And as I mentioned just then, um, after recovering from this, like, you know, gut obliterating hook to the body, so I still understand that. No, Ernie, uh, good punch, but I don't think you're right for the role. And went and got Mr. T, presumably because Mr. T wouldn't have uppercutted his fucking head off for punching him in the dick like he does in the movie. Do you reckon Shavers would also sign uh, pictures of himself saying, I'm the guy that made Rocky cry? <laughs> I won't be surprised if he did, to be fair, because there's just something amusing to me about just like the image of just like this famously tough like character or person or actor just being like just made someone's bitch in a single punch. It's so fucking funny. Like, we said that it happened to Sylvester Stallone twice. He's a big tough dude. Like he's not like he did a lot of that fighting for real, but the fact that on two separate occasions he got knocked out or like sent to the ground like gasping for him. Like the case of Dolph Lundgren when he punched him, sent to fucking hospital from a single punch. It's just a hilarious thing, like, but he played Rocky and Rocky wins all those fights. Yeah. And in real life, like Rocky, the guy who played getting his shit wrecked. Have you got any example that's been to your mind of something similar? Well, there's a trope in fiction that's used in movies a lot of the big guy who gets beaten by the smaller guy with skill. Yes. I mean, the most famous recent one being uh, The Viper of the Mountain. The Viper of the Mountain, yes. Yeah, but the one I'm thinking of is, have you seen Troy? I have not seen Troy, but I'm familiar with the story. The opening scene of Troy is, um, you know, these two armies are coming together and the leaders decide to do what's basically a one-on-one -on -one fight. Ah, right. Pick the, your best warriors. Settle it the old way. Yeah, and when the, one of them brings out this warrior who's about eight feet tall, basically built like the mountain, mm -hmm. and then the other side obviously brings out Brad Pitt, who's Achilles, and Brad Pitt charges this guy and just delete, defeats him by just jumping up and getting one uh, stab into the neck because <laughs> he's such a better trained fighter. <laughs> That's a common trope, like big guy gets defeated by oh, small, yeah. to prove the smaller guy is better. To prove our skill triumphs over strength. Well, my example's slightly different, and it's a real life one of a famously tough man, like, you know, being brought like to tears, and it's that of Gordon Ramsay. He was famous, famous back in the day for like, how ferocious his temper was, and he would make all of his sous chefs and be working on him cry for just how demanding and like, you know, just angry he was all the time. But there's a great story, like the guy who basically taught Gordon Ramsay, if he knows, a chef called Marco Pierre White. And there's a story thrown around by like, people in the industry that when Gordon first started working for Marco Pierre White, um, he yelled at him so much that Gordon Ramsay started crying. <laughs> and that is amazing. Like, imagine, I'm the guy who made Gordon Ramsay cry. If I pulled that off, that would be on my tombstone. I don't care if I landed on the moon after that. No, I made Gordon Ramsay cry like a bitch. It reminds me a lot of like the Jackass crew. Okay. Obviously, famously, I like, have taken so much punishment over the years. Like they've had their knackers just destroyed by every conceivable object that can be thrown at them. And it was like obviously the in one of the movies, like Bam Margera 
who has had like his Lamborghini destroyed multiple times. He's fallen off his skateboard more times than anyone can count. He's had like fucking staples shot into his head, all that stuff. But then there's that one thing where they make him like jump into the pit and he falls and they put a lot of rubber snakes in there and he starts crying because he's scared of snakes. And I love that prank as well, because it's like, it's next level what they do. Because it's a, it's a, a stunt where he's supposed to jump, like, jump over something, and then he falls through the floor and lands in a boxers, and it's obviously it's a prank on a prank. Mm. And then it's full of rubber snakes. And he shits himself with the rubber snakes, and oh, and then they realise they're rubber, but then there's real snakes under the rubber snakes. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, stop fucking with me! Hey, bam! Bam! Dude, I fucking hate you guys! That is so perfect. I can't believe the people who invented the vomit omelette came up with like, just these, these layers upon layers of just like prankingness. It's so ridiculous. Oh man, who thinks of this stuff? It's great.